What's up guys, KS here. Thanks for joining me today as always. Welcome to a very special edition of the If I Could Only Have One series. You guys know that I'm a huge fan of Apex Triggers. I make no bones about that and am proud to be a fan and show their products on the channel. I'm a firm believer in products that enhance your shooting experience from high quality companies like Apex. You guys have been asking me over and over again for a real comparison of some of their most popular products and challenged me to pick a winner. Just like the guns featured in the series, all of these triggers are awesome and you can't go wrong with any, but I accept the challenge, and challenging it is, to pick a winner. You know, I thought it was really cool that you guys put in the comments over several videos now that you wanted to see a little bit more of a detailed comparison between the Apex triggers. And I thought that was a great idea. A couple of people even suggested an If I Could Only Have One, and I'm all about that for sure. Now, I've got several different guns here that we're going to be diving in and talking about, of course. Apex offers other guns as well that are not featured in this video for one reason or another. I just picked these because these are some of my favorite guns to shoot, and I thought these triggers really were the most meaningful to me. So we're going to be kind of dialing into each one of these guns, talking about them for just a little while. And of course, at the end, we're going to pick a winner. Let's jump in. We're going to kick this whole thing off looking at Glock triggers first. Now, the Glock triggers from Apex have been around for quite some time. They've got a lot of different colors, a lot of different options. They offer them for Gen 3, 4, 5, what have you. And uh, and I run them in every single one of my Glocks. Uh, that's just uh, sort of mandatory for me for a lot of reasons. So we're going to take a look at uh, not only what this looks like, but also how it functions in the gun. You guys will notice that it's a flat design, almost completely flat. There's a little bit of a curve and a little bit of a lip at the very bottom, but by and large, it's flat. And one of my favorite features of this, and as you guys know, Glock OEM triggers, the safety lever in the middle doesn't completely depress, so it's really not a flat trigger. And it can be uncomfortable to some, depending on your finger and your grip and all that kind of stuff, but this goes 100% flat. It's one of my favorite features. Another thing this does, this actually keeps the trigger a little bit further forward, and as you guys know, my shooting style, it's because I've got really long fingers, I actually get pretty close to the first knuckle, and so this just makes it extremely comfortable for me, and I love the fact that they've got all the different colors, the different options and everything. And it just, it's what I've come to expect when I run a Glock. Apex is just mandatory. So let's go ahead and take a look at the pull on this guy for a moment or two. And you'll notice that there's just a little bit of take up. Now, this admittedly doesn't have a lot of a wall. I've got some other components in here that work alongside the trigger. I've got a, a, a Zev connector, a race connector in here that's, that is definitely preferred to me. I've also got a, a Zev plunger and a Zev uh, lighter plunger spring. So uh, admittedly, there's a little bit more going on here, but that's, that's really pretty common with Glock triggers. So again, it's a really nice little take up and we get to almost a wall. It's again, not completely solid, but then our pull, there's our break. Now, you know, Glocks are always going to be just a little bit spongy, but basically what this does is it, it lightens it up. And again, it, it lengthens uh, that, uh, where that pole sits. So it sits just a little bit further out. And that's why I love these so much. This trigger is going to come in around five and a quarter pounds or so, give or take. And every one of my Glocks runs just a little bit different. This one happens to be one of the better ones. And I commented on that uh, on the 45 video. So again, uh, there's our wall, or at least almost a wall, and there's our break. And one of my favorite things about it is the Glock reset, and, uh, and Apex really brings it to light. There's a really nice clean snap on that. I just absolutely love them. I mean, I, I think what they do with their Glock triggers is absolutely fantastic. In fact, I'm working on another Polymer 80 build right now in conjunction with Apex as well as uh, Steel City Arsenal and uh, more on that coming in a later time. But uh, you guys will notice this is kind of a, it's almost gray and it's almost FDE. It's kind of a combination of the two. And I think it's such a cool look going along with this gun. So again, just another uh, offering there. And I run them, whether it's a stock Glock or a uh, Polymer 80, whatever it happens to be. I think it's absolutely mandatory. The next gun in the lineup is the FN 509 Tactical. Now, you guys know I'm a fan of this gun. I think it's absolutely fantastic. But one of the things I commented about in my original video, and it's somewhere in the video library if you're curious, was that the original hinged trigger on the 509 absolutely needed some help. Um, it just, to me, it wasn't very clean and uh, the pull was pretty heavy. I know it's a duty gun, I realize that, but, uh, but I just wanted something a little bit better and thankfully, 
Apex had actually been working on a uh, an FN trigger for quite some time, and, uh, and it was pretty darn close to the release of the 509 Tactical, and I absolutely love it. Now, you guys will notice that uh, that it's totally flat and just a tiny bit of a uh, of a bump right at the very bottom, just to keep your uh, finger from rubbing against the uh, bottom of the trigger guard. But once again, our safety lever it goes completely flat in with the trigger. Again, totally mandatory for me, and uh, and I really like the look of this trigger. It's very reminiscent of another trigger we're going to be talking about in a moment or two. Uh, but the styling of it is fantastic. Of course, styling doesn't really mean everything. It's all about the pull itself. So we do have our take up. Now, I, I've made the comment before several times that uh, there's been some grit in the 509, but thankfully, it's worked itself out now. I've got some more rounds through it. It's at about 800 rounds or so, and it's totally clean at this point. So again, we've got our take up, and then we get to a nice to find wall and there's our brake. Look at that. The travel on this is almost nil. That's one of the best features of this trigger. It really does reduce that uh, the travel both ways. So um, and, and it keeps that trigger out just a little bit. Again, I love the feel of that. So we'll do this again. But here's our reset right there. Now, another thing that I commented on, and, and this has nothing to do with Apex. It actually is the 509 itself. The return spring is really weak in this. I do wish they put a better return spring and hopefully somebody will make uh, one at some point in time. But again, here's our take up, very smooth, very smooth. That's uh, I'm, I'm excited that the uh, grit is gone out of this. And then our brake, look at that. I mean, it's clean, it's crisp, it's very light. Um, and this one comes in just under five pounds now, which is really pretty cool. The original trigger on the 509 was something like, oh, six and a quarter, six and a half, something like that and then our reset and we're back out to the start. So uh, again, the, the the apex trigger in the 509 was exactly what the 509 needed and I've been extremely impressed. It definitely makes it a, a faster running gun even though that return spring does need a little help. But there's your 509. Moving on to the Smith & Wesson Shield 2.0. Now you guys know this is a primary carry for me, so it's really important that I've got a very good trigger in it as well as everything else working properly. So it's got the full duty kit in it. We're gonna take a look at that here in a moment. Now you'll notice that this one's, it's a little bit different than the FN and even the Glock. It's got a little bit more of a curve to it and still a lip at the bottom to guard your finger. And, um, and I'll tell you what, I think it's a great feeling trigger. It's got the safety lever, of course, and it goes completely flat. You'll see there's a little bit of a bar that hangs down uh, down there. And one thing I was wondering, is that going to rub against the trigger guard? It absolutely doesn't. Everything is precisely milled. I mean, it works just the way you would expect it to. So let's go ahead and pull this a couple of times. Now, I'll tell you what, the take up on this, although longer than something like that FN, I, it's incredibly smooth. Now, I expect that out of the shield. I think the shield is just, it's a very well put together gun. But once we get through our take up, we've got a nice little wall and there's our brake. It's a tiny bit spongy, and again, that's the, the full inner workings of the uh, of the shield, but that brake itself is light and crisp. I mean, it really is about a four and a half pound trigger, which is fantastic. Now, I know some of you might be saying, that's too light for a carry gun. I, you know, I really don't think so. I mean, as long as you're uh, doing all the right things and being safe, I don't think that's a problem at all. And here's your reset. Oh, it's a nice audible reset. Uh, far better than older uh, MMPs of uh, of older days. You guys remember those? But let's go ahead and do that again. There's our there's our take up right there again. Very smooth, and we get to a nice wall. And there's our break. It's light. It's crisp. I really like that. And then that reset one more time. There's your reset. Again, really nice and audible. It comes out to the start. Now, one thing I've noticed with this, and I've got the full duty kit in it, the uh, return spring on this one, actually, I kind of wish it was in the 509. It is, uh, it's pretty bold. It definitely chucks that trigger back out there, but that means you can run this pretty quickly uh, and it's very responsive. And of course, you can adjust that um, when it, uh, the uh, kit comes with all the different springs and the sear and all that good stuff. So you can mix and match the uh, stock springs with the springs that come in the duty kit to really dial into your needs. So I may at some point point in time, uh, go back and put in the uh, the stock return spring because that'll slow it down a tiny bit. But otherwise, again, it absolutely transforms the uh, gun and it's a, uh, it's, it's a great shooting experience. Last but certainly not least, we've got the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0C. Now you guys know this is one of my favorite guns in the collection. I absolutely love it. Any excuse I have to shoot it, I will definitely do that. Now I'm running currently in it a, a Faxon Gold Nitride barrel um, that was uh, donated by Faxon. I've got a video on that in the library if you're curious. But uh, but with all M&P 2.0s, whether it be the Shield or some of the other ones, um, they've got those hinge triggers. And, and when I first got the 2.0C, I, I was very impressed with the overall feel 
feel of the gun. Uh, I just simply prefer this over the full size. I'd love to try the 3.6 at some point in time, but the 4.0 seems to really uh, be great. But one thing that was still yearning, even though it was improved on the 2.0s, was the trigger, that hinge trigger. And so probably the most popular Apex trigger of them all is the uh, the flatty, they call it, um, the, uh, the Smith & Wesson trigger. And I have to say, and of course it looks just like that 509 trigger, it is it is just fantastic. I think it's a cool look. This is their Freedom trigger that I've got in there right now. Of course, they've got other options as well. But uh, but that safety lever, again, just goes completely flat in the, into the face of the trigger, and it feels absolutely fantastic. But uh, but look and feel don't necessarily mean anything with uh, without a good trigger pull. So to give you an idea of how this runs, now the, uh, the take up on this is just, it's smooth as glass. It truly is. And once you get to your wall, there's your break, and it's incredibly light. This is just over four pounds. I mean, I, I have this kind of dialed in pretty low, and I, I love it. The shooting experience on this is just fantastic. Now, the reset, there's your reset. It's not the most audible of all, but that's that's a, a, a Smith & Wesson thing. Most MMPs really don't have very audible uh, resets, but it is certainly a vast improvement upon uh, older triggers from MMPs. So again, we'll go ahead and do this, that take up very, very smooth, and we get to our wall, and there's our break. I mean, just so crisp and clean, and then our reset right there, and we're back out to the start. Man, I tell you, of all of the triggers in the collection, this is this is definitely one of my very favorites, certainly in uh, in polymer guns. The, it's, it's, you know, Apex just knew exactly what they needed to do to transform these guns from good to excellent to to some of the very best so i know i'm kind of gloating a little bit i'll stop that but uh, but i just i i love that trigger i mean it really is so much fun so here we are guys and like i said it's an if i could only have one so there has to be a winner and i have to say it's incredibly challenging to pick a winner out of these first of all four awesome firearms but also amazing triggers i mean again i i have to say apex does an awesome job they know their craft they know their science probably better than most um, and i know that's a that's a bold statement i realize but uh, but i'm just i'm a firm believer without question now when i think of all these guns and and uh, and think about the the experience with them and trying to dial into a winner, um, it's it, it can be very difficult because as I'm shooting these firearms with these triggers in them, they're just great experiences. Now, the one that I have the least experience with, I will admit, is the FN 509. I'm I'm still I'm still getting used to it. Um, it's it's fantastic, of course. It's a vast improvement upon the uh, the stock trigger. There's no doubt about it. But uh, but I'm I'm still kind of working through that. Um, and then as far as the shield triggers, I mean the the shield is fantastic. Um, it uh, it really has made the uh, the shield a much better shooting experience and uh, and it's been great i definitely need to work on that return spring just a little bit but that's that's not too big of a deal i mean it is certainly manageable one way or the other i really i really enjoy that experience and then glocks of course like i said i run apex and all my glocks i'm very used to that uh that feel the way the uh, apex works how it uh, keeps your finger just a little bit further out in the trigger guard that's really important to me so they've definitely honed in on their craft with glocks but i have to say again Again, if I have to pick a winner, and it's an if I could only have one, I have to give it to this Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0C and the flatty trigger, again, this Freedom trigger right here, it truly transforms the gun. I mean, it just makes it from a good gun to an amazing gun and an amazing experience. And I know a lot of people run with the flatty trigger in their MMPs, whether it's a 1.0 or a 2.0, and a lot of the different looks that they've got, different colors, varieties, that sort of thing. They've even got ones that are a little bit more curved as well if you're into that. But I have to say, if you have not tried an Apex trigger in a Smith & Wesson 2.0, I highly encourage you to do it. And that's the same with all of these. I mean, it really, the, the experience with all of, all of them is fantastic. But if I could only have one, it would absolutely be the flatty trigger in the 2.0. It just is such a great experience. And I love talking about it and I love shooting it even more. So guys, I'm really excited to hear what you have to say about this, your experiences with some of the different Apex triggers. And if you agree with my decision or not, and if not, why? So I'm really looking forward to that. Love having a conversation with you guys. Thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time.